Welcome back everybody, Chad Ferguson, Catfish Edge. Falling back up uh, several weeks ago, a month or so ago, I posted a video just kind of walking through some of the details and features of my 2016 Sea Art Pro Cat 240. Well, I promised in that video that I would come back with uh, another video or two, talk about the rigging and setup of my Sea Art Pro Cat 240 catfish boat walk through some of the things I've done. I've also had a ton of questions over the past year about my Hummingbird Electronics and my network, uh, how I have everything set up. So today I'm gonna walk you through uh, my electronics, uh, Hummingbird, Minn Kota setup, the basic networking, kind of what I've done to get this all set up and running and why. And I'll be back with some more videos in the future on some of the features of these different electronics and um, uh, trolling motor uh, accessories that I'm running and how I'm using them as well. And then also another video to talk about the rest of the rigging outside of my Humminbird network and Minn Kota setup. But there's so much information with this and, and how I've set this up and why that I really wanted to put the Humminbird Minn Kota information in one video. So that's what I'm going to walk through with you today. So on the front of the boat, I'm running the uh, Minn Kota Tarova. 112 trolling motor and i've got that set up with ipilot link so if you haven't seen the past videos where i've talked a little bit about ipilot link basically what that is is ipilot link uh, runs a cable from your trolling motor into your sonar and integrates with your sonar so what that does is it gives you the ability to uh, control your sonar or control your trolling motor rather from the sonar screen so if I'm driving along and I see fish on a ledge or something I can use the cursor on the Humminbird Onyx to go across the screen set a waypoint and then just hit a button on the trolling motor and the trolling motor will take me right to that waypoint or the cursor where I told it to go. Now, it'll also do a whole lot of other things other than that. That's one of the reasons uh, I, I use it primarily with catfishing. Um, driving around, looking for bait, looking for fish. Uh, that iPilot link gives me the just pinpoint precision accuracy to get exactly where I see those fish on side imaging. Um, down imaging, 2D, you name it, I can, I can go exactly where I spotted fish or exactly where I spotted bait. I don't have to do any messing around trying to figure out exactly where it was that I saw it or driving around trying to get right back on the GPS coordinate. It's as simple as just hitting a button and going right to it. That's a huge time saver catching shad. You're driving along, you see shad on your side imaging, you just take that cursor, you put it out on that school of shad, ball of shad, on your side imaging screen, hit go, hit the button on the iPilot link controller, and bam, the magic happens. The trolling motor kicks in, it takes me right to that waypoint where I told it to go, where the bait are. While I'm doing that, I can be getting my cast net out, getting ready to throw. As soon as the boat pulls up in that position, I just take my cast net, I verify that I'm actually on top of the bait on my sonar screen and throw and I'm done and I don't have to do any work in the process it's just almost completely hands off other than throwing the net really really makes it easy um, now there's also a, a other features that the iPilot link helps with I've done a video in the past on the follow the contour feature that's huge if you're gonna uh, drift troll stroll control drift whatever you want to call it there's a million different variations of it but that follow the contour feature gives you the ability to pull up the Lake Master map on the sonar screen, put the cursor on a contour, and you tell the sonar and trolling motor they're gonna work together. You tell the trolling motor to put you on that contour line on the map and follow it whichever direction you wanna go. And the trolling motor kicks in, it puts you on that contour line and it just carries you down it and follows it and uh, you can drag baits behind you, you can bump, uh, you can bounce, you can drift a million different ways, uh, or you can just look for fish. That is another huge feature of the iPilot link. So the trolling motors on the front of the boat, there are cables 
that run from the trolling motor here to the console and, and right below this console is, is what I call the brain of the system, but the Humminbird uh, network hub. So there's a network hub mounted below this console. The cables from the iPilot link run down the front of the boat and down the driver's side of the boat, down underneath this console into that network hub. That network hub is run from the console back to the batteries where it's got power and then everything kind of works in through there and networks to go into the Humminbird Onyx. So, uh, trolling motor on the front, network cables running from the trolling motor to the Humminbird Network Hub, which runs here. The Onyx has, Onyx has a cable running from it to the Humminbird Network Hub. Obviously, power cable going from here back to the battery. If you've seen any of my videos in the past where I've talked about sonar installation, make sure that you wire your sonar direct to the battery. Don't go through a switch or anything else. You're going to get much clearer pictures and, um, and better images on your screen. You're going to have a lot less problems. These newer sonar units like are out today, uh, they draw a lot of power. And, and bypassing switches and all that going direct to battery with a fuse is really going to save you a lot of headaches and power issues. So my Onyx 10 here, um, th this sonar unit's unbelievable. You can check out a uh, post on the Catfish Edge Facebook page, Catfish Edge Instagram. A lot of times I share different uh, sc sonar screenshots from the Onyx. Unbelievable unit. The detail that you can see on this unit is just out of this world. Uh, it it's amazing technology. It's really changed the way that I fish. So I've got the Onyx 10 here. This is cross-touch screen. Uh, it works like uh, almost like an iPad, you would say. You can use the controls here on the side, but you can also use your finger on the screen to uh, select things and, and hit waypoints and, and do a lot of the functions of the Onyx. They're actually on the screen. And I've got the Onyx mounted here on front of the console on the ProCat with a balls out sonar mount. Now, when you buy um, uh, sonar, whether it be the Onyx or the Helix or different brands, what it ships with is, is this uh, mount right here that's on the top of the balls out mount, which basically gives you the ability to lock in the sonar and swivel the screen uh, forward and backwards, and, and that's it. So I use this balls out sonar mount because uh, it gives me several features to be able to adjust uh, that I wouldn't otherwise be able to adjust with just the standard Humminbird mount. There's a lot of different options on the market. I've used just about all of them out there, I think. Uh, I've been running balls out on my boats for the last two and a half years, I think. Um, it, prior to that, I was using the Ram mounts. The Ram mounts work fine. Um, the problem is with these big uh, larger screen sonar units, they're heavy, and you get run across the lake in rough water, the boat starts bouncing around, and what'll happen is the screen will collapse on you, and, and it'll start kind of moving around. So you'll be driving around, and then all of a sudden sonar screen will go forward like this, uh, or it'll fall backwards or something like that. And the balls out mount, uh, this is all aluminum, and this sucker, I mean, it locks into place. Um, once you set it how you want it. So you don't have to worry about this thing moving around. I also uh, chose this unit because it gives me a whole lot more adjustments. Uh, the balls out does over a lot of the other sonar mounts that are out there on the market today. So it allows me to get the sonar screen up high, um, eye level or, or closer to eye level. I'm a tall guy. I could adjust it further up if I wanted to, but I like that screen up so I can, I can look directly at it and not have to be you know, hunched over doing this. Um, and, and there's a million different adjustments for how I can move this around. But one of the other reasons that I chose this specific balls out mount, which this is one of the longer arm mounts, um, and the way that I've mounted this is that I can actually take the sonar and I can swivel it around and I can either put the screen uh, sideways facing right here, or I can put the screen forward right up against the windshield here. What that does, it gives me the ability to watch my sonar 
when I'm on the front of the boat and I, and I really need to be dialed in and, and watching what is below me or around me. So if I'm catching bait, maybe I'm having a hard time catching bait, they're not real concentrated, they're moving around on me, then I can spin that sonar screen around, I can stay on the front of the boat, I can do everything with the iPilot controller to move the boat around, and I can see real time uh, from the front of the boat what is actually on the sonar screen without having to have another sonar unit on the nose of the boat. Um, I, I use the uh, sonar from the nose of the boat quite a bit, but it's very sporadic and I didn't want to have to install another unit up there on the front. So that's why I chose to, to go with this option so I could spin that around and look at it from there. Um, this is an amazing uh, setup, balls out, Humbert Onyx 10 cross touch. I can't recommend it enough. Um, you know, th this is a pretty expensive sonar unit, but it is uh, top of the line. I just can't begin to explain how good it is, how detailed the images are, and, and how user friendly it is. And you can really take one of these out of the box. And, and get on the water and go out there and find fish without having to do a bunch of tweaking to it. Now I've got this thing really tweaked in and super tuned to really, really dial in the fish and bait and, and really be able to see everything that I wanna see. But out of the box, you can go out there and be pretty dangerous with it. So from the Onyx, again, power run direct to the battery in the back of the boat and then a cable that runs uh, from the transducer down the driver's side of the boat back up here to the front that goes into the Hummingbird Onyx. Now, in addition to the Onyx, the Minn Kota Tarova, the iPilot Link, I also have a Hummingbird 360 transducer on the back of the boat. So if you don't know basically what Hummingbird 360 is, is it gives you a 360 degree view around the boat. Everybody pretty much knows what side imaging is by now, side scan, however you want to refer to it. So side imaging gives you a, a pretty crystal clear image of what is on both sides of the boat. Um, the Hummingbird 360 images are very similar to what you would see on side imaging. But like the name implies, you get a 360 degree view of what you're seeing around the boat. You can adjust the distance of that scan uh, out away from the boat to a big circle or a medium circle or a small circle. And the transducer from the 360 goes down when you deploy it. It drops down in the water and it actually spins. So the advantage of 360 imaging over the 2D side imaging is that Hummingbird 360 will work sitting still or moving very slowly. So where side imaging, uh, down imaging, 2D imaging, you get a picture if you're not moving or if you're barely moving. You're going to get images on your screen, but you're not going to get the detail and uh, the boat either sitting still or moving really, really slowly is often going to distort those images. So the 360 imaging gives you the advantage of being able to see what is below and around the boat sitting still or moving very slowly. So I use that kind of as a stopgap when I find fish or bait on the Onyx, either 2D, down imaging, or side imaging. And then I get over in that area and I deploy the Hummingbird 360 and use that to really dial in where the bait or the fish are. And that gives me the precision to really get right on top of them and stay on top of them. And then also more importantly, make sure that the fish or the bait that I'm targeting are actually still there. So, um, you know, if I get where I see uh, fish on the screen on side imaging, I'll put the cursor on them, I'll drop that trolling motor, I'll let the trolling motor take me in to where I've marked those fish on the side imaging, deploy the Hummingbird 360, 
set the range on the 360 to what I want to look at and then make sure that I'm on top of those fish or bait fish. And then as I'm either fishing or catching bait, I'm constantly watching that 360 to see, you know, if those fish are still there where I'm sitting or if they're moving around. And if they're moving around, then I can just leave that 360 in the water. Again, use the iPilot controller for the Minn Kota and just make very minor adjustments to move the boat around and stay on those fish and catch them. The Hummingbird 360, again, another network cable running from the 360 down the driver's side of the boat back up here to the console that runs into this Humminbird network hub. So basically everything on the boat ports into that network hub with the network cables and then the network cable runs from the hub into the Onyx and that's what gives everything out there the ability to talk to each other and work with each other so I can see the 360 imaging, side imaging, down imaging, 2D sonar, the maps, and can control the trolling motor all through the Onyx sonar unit with that Humminbird network. It sounds complicated, it's really not. Once you sit down, you figure out what you're gonna install and what you need. Um, bottom line is, you can work through Humminbird or your local retailer to figure out what exactly you need uh, whether you need that network hub or not and, and what kind of cables and everything you need. Once you get that and figure out actually the parts and, and pieces and everything you need to get this up and running, it's really not difficult to install. I installed everything on the boat myself and it didn't take me very long at all. Um, beyond making sure you have all the right parts and cables and pieces and everything is the hardest part is just getting the cables run correctly and fished all through the boat and up to the console here where this network hub is and into the sonar unit. Once I got everything cabled, it took me a few hours of fish tape, an extra set of hands to help me speed the process up. Once I got everything cabled, plugged it all in, it was up and running perfectly with no problems. First rattle out of the box. So that's how I've got this set up. This is really a state-of-the-art sonar system as far as Humminbird and Minn Kota goes. Part of the reason that I prefer uh, Humminbird and Minn Kota is that I feel like they're really much more advanced than a lot of the other uh, sonar companies out there with the networking and being able to get the trolling motor and, and all the other parts and pieces to talk to the sonar unit. And uh, you know, I am a pro staff member for Humminbird and Minn Kota, but I've been using Humminbird and Minn Kota long before I was a pro staff member and really, really, truly believe in their products. So um, Minn Kota, Tarova 112 trolling motor, iPilot Link, Humminbird Onyx 10, balls out sonar mount, the Humminbird network hub down below the, the console, and then Humminbird 360 sonar on the back of the boat. And that's my electronic setup. And again, a lot more details on why I'm running those and why you might consider them. I'll be doing some more tips and tricks in the future on exactly how I use these different features, um, some more setup information. So go down below and leave a comment. Let me know what kind of information that you're interested in, what you wanna know about uh, sonar, side imaging, down imaging, 2D, iPilot link, Humminbird 360, installation, getting it set up, using it, and how to go out there and catch more and bigger catfish. And I'll try to get your questions answered in one of our future videos on these Humminbird products and Minn Kota products that I'm using. You can go back and check out other videos that I've done on sonar, how to install them, different information on using sonar, for going out catching more bigger catfish and uh, again leave a comment below if you like this information hit that thumbs up button and let me know and uh, we'll try to get your questions answered we like to hear from everybody out there make sure you subscribe to our channel and we'll be back next week with another video until next time i'm chad ferguson catfishedge.com